The government just doesn't get it. That's evident again this evening from the languid complacency with which the Foreign Secretary uh, spoke such that his honourable friend from Canuck Chase said that he felt that the Foreign Secretary's heart wasn't in it, to the period of time when there was not a single government member on the front bench, to the body language of the two who now are, when the Right Honourable Lady was speaking, the sneering, the nudging, oblivious, utterly oblivious, to the fact that the Right Honourable Lady's speech will be listened to by millions tomorrow and read by millions and given real weight, whilst what they have to say will be treated, if they're lucky, with derision. The Prime Minister's initial prospectus for this inquiry proved that they just don't get it. When I was elected as the first left of Labour Member of Parliament elected in England for 60 years in 2005. I was elected because of Iraq. The Labour Party's membership has halved because of Iraq. Millions of Labour voters have left them. New parties are proliferating and strengthening some of them of the left and some of them of the right. In substantial part because of Iraq. Not directly, but indirectly. Because of the poison that this Iraq question has caused to pulse around the British body politic. The lack of credibility of the British political class because of Iraq. The government still doesn't get it. If they did, they would have used this opportunity for a grand catharsis to turn the page, to finally leave Blairism behind and called the kind of inquiry which has been repeatedly demanded here in the House this evening. I give way to my honourable friend. Uh, I, thank, uh, I thank the member for giving way. Would he also concede that it's not just British politics that have been changed and, and designed by Iraq, the effect all across Europe, indeed all over the world of the anti-war movement, but particularly in the United States, where for all his support for the war in Afghanistan, President Obama basically owes his position to his opposition to the Iraq war and his initial victories in the Democrat primaries because of that. American politics has also been delineated by Iraq. Indeed, there's been a holding to account in the United States of America. There's been a catharsis. Those responsible for the disaster have been cleansed away. And there is a sense of a new beginning. Of course, we don't have that option because some of us recall only too vividly the ironclad consensus between the two front benches in the run-up to the war, where the right honourable gentleman who was then leading the opposition differed from the government only in that he wanted the war faster and more brutal and more overwhelming. We have no chance for that catharsis because Tweedledee and Tweedledum, one of them will rule the country when the general election comes, and that's a disaster for us. That makes this inquiry much more important than it might otherwise have been. That's why we ought to have a real inquiry. Now, I'm a founder, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and the Vice President of the Stop the War Coalition, which organized the demonstrations of millions which have been referred to this evening. So forgive me if I'm a little more rebarbative than some of the politesse that we've heard here this evening, for I seek to speak for those millions that were on the streets of this country. People have queued up to say they have nothing against the membership of this inquiry. Well, I do. The more the Foreign Secretary adumbrated their distinguished characteristics, the more I saw a parade of establishment flunkies. Sir Humphrey this and Sir Humphrey that. And those that are not just grey blurs are in fact partisans. Friedman is one of the authors of the intellectual case for the war. He and his neocon friends were the people who made the Prime Minister of the day's bullets for the war. Gilbert hailed Bush and Blair, imagine, two of the most discredited political figures in the world already, and history hasn't even started on them yet, hailed them as akin to Roosevelt and Churchill. <laughs> 
And yet both of these men are on this very small group of people who are going to conduct this inquiry. Why can't we have real politicians on this inquiry? Why can't the Honourable and Learned Member for Medway, Forensic, Learned, Legal, be on the committee? Why can't the Right Honourable and Learned Gentleman, the Member for North East Fife, with all his experience and all his skills and training, why can't he be on this inquiry? Why can't the former Foreign Secretary, Lord Hart, be, with his great vast knowledge of international affairs, be on this inquiry? Why should Parliament be represented by a woman I have never heard of? And I've sat in this place for 23 years. And I doubt if anybody here, other than those with the privilege to know the lady personally, could tell you anything that she's ever done. How can she represent Parliament in this great debate, this great inquiry? No military men, no men or women of legal eminence, no politicians except a non-political peeress of whom none of us have heard. 